Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, I did a video talking about some useful things that are hidden in Lightroom Classic. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. It probably won't surprise you to learn that there are a ton of useful things hidden in Photoshop. In today's video, I want to talk about one of those things, something I think is very useful, particularly if you're relatively new to Photoshop and you don't know how to do a lot of different things. Now, as you can see, I have a number of different images opened up into Photoshop, and you probably know that there's something in Photoshop called actions. They're not hidden away. As a matter of fact, in my workspace, I have them right here. If you don't see actions in your workspace, you could go up to window and just make sure actions has a check mark next to it. In actions, you could do a number of different things. And you could see I have two different folders of actions. I have Morganti actions. Obviously, these don't come with Photoshop. If you purchase my course on Photoshop called Photoshop Unleashed, these actions are one of the freebies you get. But directly above that is a folder called default actions. These are actions that come with Photoshop. And you can see you could do a lot of useful things here. You could add a vignette or a wood frame or cast a shadow and so on. There's probably a dozen different actions in there that come with Photoshop. Well, there is something kind of like actions that's hidden in Photoshop. They're called quick actions. You could go through every single menu item and every single panel, and you will not find quick actions anywhere. Now, for example, let's say for this specific image, I'd like to blur the background. Well, I know there's actually a quick action that will allow me to do that with just really a single click. Now, before you use a quick action, what I do suggest you do is to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J on your computer. The reason why you want to do that is some of the quick actions will duplicate the background layer for you automatically, but others won't. So you'll be applying your quick action to your background layer. And usually you don't want to do that. You want your background layer to be untouched and do all your work above the background layer. So just to be safe, duplicate the background layer, Command or Control J. Then to get to quick actions, you have to go to the help menu, believe it or not. Then down to Photoshop help. And then you'll notice partway down are quick actions. They're hidden away. <laughs> Just click on that and you can see there's a number of different quick actions, things you could do with pretty much a single click. And one of those quick actions is blur background. Just click on it and it will take a second. It has to isolate the subject. And you can see it blurred the background. Now, almost all the quick actions are editable. To do edits to your quick action, just close down this Discover dialog box. And you'll notice that in this case, it did duplicate the background layer for me. And I, it applied a smart filter, Gaussian Blur. To edit this, just double click on the words Gaussian Blur. And then I could edit it. I could make it more blurry or less blurry or somewhere in between. So you could edit this specific quick action that way. Now let's try something else. Let's go to another image. I have this image here. And let's say when I add a lens flare. Well, I'm going to, again, duplicate the background layer by hitting Command-J on my Mac, Control-J on the PC. We're going to go up to Help, down to Photoshop Help, down to Quick Actions. And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's an option, Add Lens Flare. I click on that, and you can see it worked very quickly. It added a lens flare right there. This is editable as well. Just close this down. Then you could see it did not duplicate the background layer for me, so it's a good thing I did. Double click on the words lens flare and you'll get this dialog box. Now, unfortunately, you won't get a preview here on the actual image. You'll only get it up here. So if you want to do any edits here, you'd have to try to look at this little window. You could move the lens flare. Let's say move it over there. And you could change the lens type. I'll stay with the 50 to 300 zoom and we'll click OK. And you can see now it's over there and we have a lens flare coming from the other direction. Let's try something else because some, some of these act a little weird, although this one actually will work OK. But it might throw you for a loop because we're duplicating the background layer. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. We're going to hit Command or Control J because we should do that. And then we're going to go up to um, Help, Photoshop Help. 
and then we're going to go to quick actions. And on this one, I want to remove the background. So I'm going to click there and you're going to see that it, it says it's done, but we still have the background. Well, that's because I duplicated the background layer. I have to turn it off, but it's a good thing I did. It would have done this on the background layer, but just turn that off and you could see it removed the background very, very easily, and very quickly. Now, Let's go to another one. Some of them, particularly the ones that use neural filters, those specific quick actions uh, don't work the way you think they're going to work. Let me just show you. Let's say I have this image here and I want to soften her skin. Well, there's a quick action for that. I'm going to duplicate the background layer, hit Command or Control J, then I'm going to go up to Help, then down to Photoshop Help, then down to Quick Actions, and then there's one for Smooth Skin. So we're going to click on that. And you're going to see, oh, it did it. But I don't see anything. But it says it did it. Well, with the neural filter quick actions, what you're going to have to do to get it to kick in is to click on the actual filter. So right here, click on neural filters. It will open up the neural filters dialog. And then you'll see it kick in. Once it kicks in, you could adjust it if you need to. Just click OK. Then you could close this down. And you could see there is before. And there is after. There is before. And there is after. And I'm going to finish this off with a whimper. I'm going to show you some a quick action that doesn't work well at all. I'm just going to show it to you because that way you don't waste time doing it. I'm going to fit this image to screen by hitting a Command-0 on my Mac, Control-0 on a PC. This is an old photo of my mother and father. And I want to colorize it. Well, there's a quick action for that. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command J on my Mac, Control J on a PC. We're going to go up to Help, down to Photoshop Help. We're going to go to Quick Actions. Now, this uses a neural filter as well, if I could find it. Yeah, here, Colorize Old Folder Photos. So we're going to click on that. And because, again, it's a neural filter, it won't kick in until you open the neural filter dialog by clicking right here. And you'll see then it will kick in. And the colorized neural filter for me just never really works well. You could see that it's it miscolored part of her dress and didn't color part of her dress down here. And it didn't color part of the, um, the pillar over here. And there is a way you supposedly could come in here and tell it what to paint where but it's a lot of work. And I actually did a video for this for one of the Photoshop summits demonstrating how to do it, how to like color areas that didn't get colored. But I've tried it on this image and I wasn't able to do it. I just wasn't able to do it. It's so difficult. And th in general, the colorize um, neural filter just doesn't work well, period, whether it's a quick action or not. So there you could see before and there you could see after. So those are quick actions buried and hidden away in Photoshop. And in the future, I'll be doing more videos on features that are buried and hidden away in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.